This is my BMW X3 M competition. The same car that so many people told me I couldn't fix. When I bought it, both of the chassis legs were bent and all of the airbags had gone inside from a really heavy front end collision. But now the new chassis legs are on and we got the interior back in in the last video, which is already such a huge step in the right direction. But I bought it knowing that this was gonna be the biggest task I've ever tackled. So I'm gonna try and prove everyone who doubted me wrong by getting this engine back in. And this is the S58 engine we had to remove out of it to fix the chassis leg. But now that that's done, that means that we've got to get it back inside the car. And hopefully we've done everything right on the engine so it starts up first time without any issues. But we're gonna find out. Ah. Right, hold it there, Jake. <laughs> Great success. <laughs> so here is where we're at on the engine. I think, apart from some heat shields over the turbos, this is about good to go. Obviously we need to get it off this stand so we can get a gearbox on there. We need to get the downpipes on and quite a few of the little bits, but it won't be long now until we're trying to drop it into here. Ethan, just show them where the engine goes. <laughs> Plenty to do, let's get on with it. But there was a couple of bits which we got done before this video even started. First of which was fitting a new windscreen, and also I had to retrace some of my steps and take back off the sump just to do one tiny little job. And that is Loctite in the oil pickup pipe bolts because I didn't do that when I took the sump off before. So with those done, I then resealed the sump, and then I could start fitting up the heat shields for all around the engine bay and the gearbox tunnel. Which without being able to get the car in the air was a bit of a tight squeeze. And now it's on to getting the last final bits on the engine to make sure this can go in the car without problems. So we had a turbo actuator to fit firstly. And then it's time to get the engine off the engine stand. So we can hook up the engine crane to the front and rear pickup points on the block. And once the weight of this six cylinder lump is taken by the crane, we can then remove the stand and then start looking at attaching the gearbox. So once that was lined up, we could then send her home and pop a couple of bolts in just to hold it in place. And whilst I'm working on putting the gearbox bolts in, Ethan can tighten up the front prop. Well, I don't know about that one, mate, but what I do know is that we've now got the gearbox bolted up and I've put the first bolt Rodeo in. G. And I've put the first bolt in for the, do you mind? <laughs> I've got the first bolt in for the torque converter, so now we need to get five more of those in. And then it's on with the starter motor, and then we can do the downpipes. The dirt pipes. The DPs, Ethan likes a DP. Once the first bolt was in for this, it made it a lot easier, so Ethan could turn over the engine by hand while I worked on tightening these torque converter bolts. And with all six of those in place, I can now fit up the starter motor. So there's three bolts which hold this in, a earth and a power lead. And then there was a couple of pipes which were on back order from BMW, which we've now got, the main one being the coolant feeds for both the turbos. Good Progress is looking good, isn't it? Boom shakalaka. So we've now got all the heat shields bolted up. We've got some new coolant lines on here. The only thing that we're missing for down this side of the engine... I don't know. It's the downpipes. And let me tell you, we've got something special because the guys at Performance M have sent us out. Where have they gone, Ethan? Da ah, there they are. Some lovely, lovely downpipes. But not just that, they are, in fact, sports cats. Can you see in there? We, we do have cats in there. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, we're going to need the extra flow to uh, obviously accommodate for the new hybrid turbos. So now they can go on, and I think that side of the engine is more or less ready. So massive thank you to the guys at Performance M for getting these out. If you need any BMW bits, I'm going to leave their link in the description. But uh, yeah, let's get these bad boys on. So we can now fit up the upgraded downpipes, the sports cats, which as I said, are going to help the enhanced performance of this car and help the exhaust flow. So with the lambers already fitted, we could just attach the V-band clamps around each of them, and that was those done.
Well now I think we're as ready as we're ever going to be. There's a few plugs loose and stuff, but it's nothing that's not accessible from the top. And we just need to get the engine mounts on the engine mount brackets just here. And then we've got to try and lower it in place. My idea is to put a skate underneath to catch the gearbox so that can roll in and then just get it onto these here and bolt up the engine mounts and then deal with the rest afterwards. So the engine mounts are just held in with one big fat bolt on the side. And with that tightened in, we can start to push the engine and gearbox into place. After months of work, it's finally time for this S58 engine to go back to its home inside my BMW X3M. Right, I need to twist her in. So we get everything in position and get the height of the engine right and the angle too, and with the skate positioned underneath, it's time to go for it. We had to be so careful to make sure that we don't damage anything on this engine because if something goes unseen, it could cause us a nightmare further down the line. Or even worse than that, one small slip could mean we end up damaging the car and the engine as well. Yeah, it needs to just... Whoa, 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 come back. Whoa. And to make it even harder, this engine was massive. And even though the X3M is quite a big car, it was still a tight fit. After a two hour long battle positioning this engine just right, we managed to drop it down onto the mounts and release the engine crane and drop the jack back onto the floor. <laughs> you see me? Only jaws. Right, up the engine's in and I'm trying my best to do up the engine mount bolts. It was not easy one bit. I'm not having fun down here either, but as soon as these are in, I can get the car up in the air on quick jacks It'll make my life a breeze compared to this. You're looking very, uh, I can't see you down there, Chris. I'm just here. Hey up. Hey up. Hey, up oh, I could just yeah. see you. Hey, <laughs> just see you. Just rolling around underneath the next three. Oh, look. Living the dream. To show the people what we've done. Oh my God, look. Oh, sh. <laughs> we've actually done something. We've actually put an engine in a car with no help. There, look, there he is, look. Look, the legs are out. <laughs> I'm getting out of the cramps. Here we sauce. go, look. Hey! Boyo! Oh, my neck. Where is he? Here he is, look. <laughs> look how attractive he looks. <laughs> I'm single, so hit me up. Oh, my shoulders are too warm to get out. There's one side tight, I need to tighten up the other side, and then we need to tighten the bolts from the engine mount to the subframe and then she can go up. These but ones, I think. Yes, they're the ones. <laughs> right, next day and the engine is officially in the car. We have an engine back in the X3M and let me tell you, that is a big relief for me. Not only do I get a lot of space back in the garage, but also we're one step further to actually driving this car. Now we had to remove one of the downpipes in order to get the engine in past the steering column, but also as well we had to remove one side of the diff case and if you can see that just down there, but that can all go back on. So now what I'm gonna do is get the engine crane off and clear myself a bit more room because there is still a lot more to do here to get this car started. And the first thing towards that is I've got to hook up the heater pipe. So there's two coolant lines which go from the front and go into the bulkhead. And then we've got the brake servo pipe, which goes from the brake servo all the way around to the engine. We can also hook up the fuel lines. Then we've got all of the power cables, which go to this terminal just by the brake servo. And then this was damaged in the accident because the airbox was pushed backwards, it cracked the oil filling X, so I've got a new one of those to go on. 
I'm sort of just freestyling my way through this, doing what I can, doing what I can remember, and going through my massive pile of parts over here, and just starting to get things on. I think, because I've got the fuel on now, that's all connected, I think the ECU goes here, so I think I might tackle that next. So we can put in this trim which supports the ECU bracket. And then pop the ECU into place with a locator pin and two bolts which hold it down. And then there's just a whole load of plugs which come from the engine directly to the ECU which only really go in one place so it's just finding exactly where they fit and also where they clip to so it's all nice and neat. Well, even though it doesn't look much different, we are making good progress with the ECUs in as well. But now I think I need to get underneath. Because we had to pop off one of the downpipes, which we popped on earlier in order to get the engine in, I've got to put that one in, I think, from the bottom. And in order to do that, I can get the car back on quick jacks. Because it's got the weight in the front, that means that it won't teeter. The weight distribution will be right. So I can get the quick jacks back under now. Then we can get the car up in the air. And we can start messing around under there because there's quite a lot to do underneath too. Now while we're getting the car up in the air, it's the perfect time for me to take two seconds to have a quick snack. But if you're anything like me, you struggle to get the time to even go shopping or make anything that's going to be good and healthy. So instead of going out and getting some fast food, instead there's a much healthier and quicker alternative. Why food? And with so many delicious flavours to pick from, my personal favourite is the cold brew coffee. Or Matt loved happy banana so much, he's even got his own limited edition packaging. It's good. You can be guaranteed there's going to be a flavour which you'll love. God damn! Why food isn't a fat diet product or a protein shake, it's simply a meal replacement drink. Meaning when you're stuck into the middle of jobs like this, you can stay full and at maximum energy capacity because it's got 26 vitamins and minerals in each bottle and 34 grams of protein. So throw your junk food in the bin and replace it with a Y food by using the link in the description and the discount code which is on screen right now. And let's look after our bodies as much as we look after our cars. So thank you Y-Food for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to work. Now just quickly, just to let some of you guys know, these are safe. They're rated up to 2,268 kilograms and this weighs just over two tons, so we're well in there. And it's not just hydraulically operated. Once it's used hydraulics to lift the car up, it then locks in place with these bars here. So it's locked in and is not going to fall. I know some of you guys are concerned for my safety, these are safe. So I can feed in the downpipe from underneath the car with the lambers still attached, while my mate Dean is up the top and he just gets it into position and hooks on the V-band clamp. And now that that's done, I can get back underneath and put the prop into position and put all three of those bolts in, but one of them was inaccessible in the car with its current position because it's stuck in park. I had to manually go down the side of the gearbox and engage neutral so I can spin the prop round and get that bolt in. And now it's time to put the front drive shafts in, so in order to be able to get enough movement on the hub in order to do that, I've got to take off all of the arms as well as the track rod. And starting with the driver's side, I can put this drive shaft in, which goes all the way through the diff. And then tighten up the bolt, which goes through the wheel bearing. And while this is off, it's the perfect opportunity to change over this track rod end and inner tie rod, which we welded previously, so I've got some brand new ones to go in place. Then it's just a case of bolting all the arms back into the hub and that side is good to go. But there is one more thing I need to do before we do the other side, which is the oil cooler lines, because unfortunately these were slightly damaged at the ends, so I'm gonna replace these entirely, which is a super fiddly job. Then we've got all the heat shields to go underneath, including the ones which cover the prop. And now I can tackle the drive shaft on the other side as well as that other inner tie rod and track rod end too. Mm -hmm. 
and we're getting on pretty well, but these have all been, you know, quite mundane jobs. I've got something more exciting to do in just a second. Right then, we've got the drive shafts in, one there, one here. We've got the new inner tie rods and track rod ends on. I've put on some new oil cooler lines because they were bent on the ends. And also underneath, we've got all of the heat shielding we need. And Liam's here. Hi, Liam. Do you want to... Hi, you're, Chris. You're so good at unboxing. Do you want to show us what's in oh, the box? I am good at unboxing, aren't I? Right, so what we've got here, guys. Pipe. Lots of... Pipe. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a it's a mid pipe. It That's what it is. Pipe. It's a mid pipe from Modstock, and it's getting late, so I can't think. But it's a two. It's a it's a, it's a single mid pipe. It looks like a double mid. Well, pipe. no, it's a two to one. Is it a two to one? So it goes two into one, and then back to, back two, to two. Because BMWs typically have unequal length mid pipes, which makes them sound a bit like this. Hey! <laughs> you put me on the spot there. That's the one thing that does let BMWs down, I will admit it. The sound of beamers can sometimes be a bit rubbish, so I think the sports cats mixed with this and sticking with the standard bat box should give a nice balance between sound, sound quality, and performance gain. So this exhaust from the guys at Modstock, so thank you very much for that from for this from them guys. Uh, they're the same people who did the exhaust on the M3, but this is not the M3, this is the X3, and it's gonna be a beast. Time to lay some pipe. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's some dump valve. It is, isn't it? So we can get the new mid pipe laid under the car and start bolting that up to the down pipes. This stainless section deletes the OPF so opens up a bit more flow and noise out the exhaust. So whilst I connect up the down pipe brace, Liam pushes up the new mid section so I can get that bolted onto those new sports cats. Now because we're still using the back section of the exhaust, the original one, we've got to make a slight modification to allow the new mid pipe to bolt up. So with a little bit took off there, that should fit perfectly. You'd think that's been done with a chop saw, Chris. Nice cut there, Liam. That clean. That is a clean like cut. A chop saw clean. So with the new two to one mid pipe bolted into the cats and also one of the hangers bolted up to the car, we can start positioning the back box section. So with all the clamps and the connecting pipes on, Liam pushes the bat box up into place and we can start bolting that in. And then I can plug in the exhaust valves on both sides. And with the last clamp bolted up, the new mid pipe and the full exhaust system are now on the car. and it's looking saucy. Even if the exhaust tips do need a bit of a clean up. But the exhaust setup we've now got on this car should mean we've got enough flow to be able to take full advantage of the extra power that these Litco hybrid turbos are gonna put out. <laughs> Modstock exhaust now <laughs> fitted on yeah. the X3M. And me and Liam are ready to call it a night, but first, take a look, there we go. <whistles> Damn. Don't mind these, yeah. they can't go next to each other. They're, they uh, should have gone on the outside really. They should have gone on We're the outside. We're not taking them off now to uh, change that, yeah. so it is what it is. Yeah. But, I can't remember what they call it, it's like a single mid pipe or something. And what it is, look at the girth on that. Now, right. now you can see it better than <laughs> us. Now you can see me and Liam. But we can't hear how it's going to sound, because we've still not got everything plumbed up for the engine and I've got loads of stuff in my eye. And I'm let's, going home and I'm going to bed. Let's crack on in the morning. Oh yeah, a massive thank you to Modstock for sending that out. If you need any exhaust and stuff, their link's going to be in the description. They do customised uh, stock exhaust, if that makes sense, and also prefabricated aftermarket ones. Look at me. <laughs> I'm sweating. I'm dirty. Knees weak. Arms are heavy. <laughs> Next day, and it's time to get the car back down on the floor because there's still plenty more to do. The engine is looking a lot better, but it's still not there. So the next job to do is fit up the bracket which holds the aircon little radiator thing. And then once that's on, I can drop that AC unit into place. Followed by a new oil filter, ready for some fresh oil to go in it before we start the car. But we want to make sure the oil doesn't just spill all over the floor. So we want to make sure the car is oil tight. So I've got to bridge the oil cooler lines again, because obviously I'm going to have to take the oil cooler off in order to fit the rad pack and everything. So this will do for now. 
We are now getting there. We're getting you know, close to being able to start this car. I've got a new oil filter in. I've got one of the intake pipes on. I've got the aircon on. Not really necessary. And I've bridged the oil cooler down there. But one thing we are missing is the charge pipe over the front, which got mashed up in the accident. But I've got a new one right here. It actually worked out half price to get this from BMW rather than get it secondhand from a breakers on eBay. So it was about 350 quid. Still expensive, but not as bad as what I originally thought going off what the eBay listing prices were. I think I've got everything plugged in which I need to have plugged in. There is still some more bitch which I need to order in, but there should be enough on here now to start this car. But there is no fluids inside it, so that's what I need to do next. I'm gonna start with the engine oil, I also then need to do the front diff, and then follow that with the transmission. Which means being back underneath the car, and I'm gonna go right to the front, all the way, and find the fill hole, which is gonna be somewhere in that mess there. You guys might be able to see it, but I cannot. That looks like it to me, so I think that's a 14. Let's try and get that out. So it's now time for some fluids in the X3M before we go for that first start. So I've got to crack out the fill plug for the front diff and then fill that up using my mini little pump. And then just wait until that overfills out of the fill hole. Then I can put the bung back in and then put seven liters of engine oil inside the engine. And then I can put the cap back on and go underneath and start filling up the gearbox oil once I've cleaned out that mini pump. But I did have to cut down my Allen key in order to get it in the space. So the same as the front diff, I've just got to keep filling it until it overfills out of the fill hole. But it didn't seem to take much, so I definitely need to run the car through the gears and get the gearbox up to temperature and then fill it up again. And then onto the brakes, because we need to be able to press the brake pedal in order to be able to start the car. So we fill up the brake fluid reservoir and start bleeding all of the calipers. Well, we're as close as we're ever going to be. I've done everything I think I can now before I, I just can't put it off anymore. I've got to try and start this car, but I cannot start it with the battery that's in it. We've got a puny little thing which isn't right for the car, which was in it when I bought it for some reason. I've gone and picked up a brand new one from BMW here. Let's get that on and let's just do this. So in goes the new genuine battery and also this will need code into the car, but I can bolt that into place, but I can't help but feel that all of the hard work that I've put into this car up to this point, if I can get this car started, will all have been worth it. If not, I'm in a massive financial hole. But we've already come so far, taking this from a completely wrecked example to already now having the engine removed and replacing these broken chassis parts and getting the engine back in. But it's been a great journey already. I've made memories with some of my best friends along the way and regardless of what happens next, as far as we've got is still a huge achievement on its own. But now we've got all of the fluids inside the car, the only thing to do is disconnect all of the coil packs to make sure that we can crank the car and get some oil pressure before we start it. And just keep our fingers crossed that everything that we've done up to this point is right. Right, I think I've done everything I can. We've only got one thing left to try now and that's prime this engine and try and start it. I've hooked up the fuel, I've filled up the fluids, I've connected all the connectors I can connect. There is nothing more I can do. Let's turn the ignition on. I can't, I can't describe to you guys how nervous I am right now. This is, like I feel like as soon as I press this button, it's gonna make or break this build. If it starts and it sounds fine, then we're winning. If not, one, I'm gonna look like an idiot, but two, that's gonna mean a whole lot more work if this engine does not sound good. But either way, I think if it does start, this is gonna be the biggest achievement of my YouTube career so far. Okay. Here we go. It should just crank for now because we've only, we've got all the core packs disconnected, but here we go. Okay, it's not started. Put those there. Okay, take two. Three, two, one. Still got a key fault. I can't get them much closer to where they need to be. Let's go again. Ah, 
over something so simple. Let me get this sorted. Chips, <laughs> he's here to How's save the day. Good. <laughs> right, we've got one X3 key, two X3 key. Both need battery. This one needs a keyblade. Don't know where yep. it is. Yeah, we can sort that out as well. Thank you. So we get a new keyblade for that. And as quick as a flash, dips from P1 Auto Keys came round, and not only did he cut me a new blade for one of the keys which was missing one, he also replaced both the batteries for me and did a couple of other keys while he was here. But with that done, we can try again. Huge thank you to Dips at P1 Auto Keys. I'm gonna leave his Instagram in the description. If you ever get stuck, he's the man to call. Um, he's based in Leicestershire. But right, so, should have a new key battery in there. Now, we should be able to at least crank this engine. Let's give it a go. Refill coolant, obviously. We've got no coolant in the car at the moment because we're missing a bunch of stuff, but hopefully now this should crank. It's not having it. I wonder what I've done wrong. Let's plug the code reader into it, same. So I've just read the car and all we've got is a bunch of DME faults. Now I've checked over everything here and everything seems plugged into the right places. Got no power here. No power there? Yeah. So that means we follow that. Is that right? Yeah. So you've got no power here. So we just need to follow back and see what's not connected. Okay, let's do that. Well, although it's not ideal, at least we've found a problem, and a problem might be a fixable problem. So Dips found there was no power coming from this cable connected to the battery, so he bridged that into the one next to it, which did have power, and then we can see what that's gonna do. Yep, got power. Power there. Now, what we have found under here, which I haven't looked for yet, is this. This is, well, it's part of the pyro fuse. I don't really know what's gone on here because we managed to start this car already, but this is not how this should look. I'll put a picture on the screen right now of what it should look like, and it's not like that. So anyway, I do need to get a new one of them. But it shouldn't cause us a problem because we have started this car before, so. Yep, we've now got power at the front. Ooh, which is good news. So. I can't believe you're here for the start. You just walked in right <laughs> <at> the end. <laughs> Randomly just- I know, yeah. It. There you go. Let's do it. Well, I say the start, it should crank, is what we're hoping for. Okay. Here we go. Yes! She's cranking, baby! How do I stop it? <laughs> Press it again. Nice. <laughs> oh, that's scary. Woo! <laughs> okay, I want to go again. Right, coil packs back in. One, six. Oh, I'm so scared, I'm so scared. If this starts, you've got to subscribe, that's the rule. Are we ready? Dips, are you ready? Ready. No start. Fuel. It's got fuel. Is it fuel connected? In? It looks pretty plugged in to me. We did have a fuel rail fault, didn't we? Yeah. These are all fan faults. Rail pressure sensor signal short circuit to B plus. So you think that means it's uh, shorted to the positive. positive? Yeah. And I'm guessing that this is the fuel pressure sensor, rail sensor, and it's got a fat tire up on it, and. You think that's been repaired before? Yeah, because you can see the, you can see the yeah, yeah. over it. Now we've and not done that. Well. We have not done that. So let's investigate. Yeah. So we can peel back the insulation on this slightly shoddy looking wiring, which revealed something which I really didn't want to see. What is going on here? Yeah, my yeah. little. That's not. Um, that's definitely been worked. Yeah. Well, that is not factory. That's for sure. Three soldered wires to get the cover off this one, but does this mean I'm in for big trouble here on? It's worrying because that means that someone's tried with this car before. Yeah, 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 That's yeah. exactly yeah. what it means, so <laughs> this could be a nightmare. Yo! We've got some bad news, my boy. It's not looking good, Brev. Is it not? No. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Ethan's just done a fuel check. I think we're safe to say we've, we've got some fuel it's, nice it's on a bit there. of pressure. <laughs> There's quite a lot of pressure there, though. Yeah. So well, smart, then. Don't even think it's smart, it? yeah. Well, I've plugged the coil packs back in, and 
Like I said, it ran. Okay, so that one wasn't. That one wasn't plugged in. But it was plugged in, but it wasn't clicked. But I don't know. Yeah, that will make on, a try difference. Again. I'll give it one more go. So the fuel pump's working. Yep. What do you reckon's up with the ETH? Beamer, innit? <laughs> so right now we've got no fault codes on DME. So. Have you done anything? No. Nope. You've done you absolutely nothing. Cleared the fault codes and you've whispered on it. It might be worth He's, a, he's gave it a dip stitch. Go on, give it a go, give it a go. Yeah, I'm gonna watch for what you ready? Yeah. I'd love to tell you what the fault was, but I have no idea. All we did is unplug a coil pack and mess around with a few of the ECU plugs, so it was probably one of them. Turn it off. Oh. oh. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Right. <laughs> right, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you've not already. I think I've earned it. And I'll catch you next time.